Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. We are continuing to learn more tonight about the deadly hit and run crash that killed two people over the weekend near Airway Heights. According to court documents, the suspected driver, Megan Skillingstad, was drunk at the time. And new court documents reveal it is not the first time she's been involved in a case like this. Krem 2 Shannon Mowdy spoke exclusively with the mother of one of the victims who was outraged the suspect was allowed back on the road. Shannon? Tonda Miller says she just found out last night that her son and his girlfriend were hit and killed while walking on West Trails and Flint Road near Airway Heights. And now she is processing her loss and focusing on justice. It's just lost. The last time Tonda Miller spoke with her son Desmond was the day before he was killed. She says he told her he loved her and to keep her head up during a hard time. She tried to call him again Saturday. I was wondering why he wasn't answering my phone call and asked if him and Katie were okay and told him I loved him. We'll come to find out that phone call was made about the time that they got hit, so. Miller says Desmond and his girlfriend Katie McFerrin were walking to the casino when they were hit on West Trails and Flint Road. 29-year-old Megan Skillingstad is now charged with two counts each, vehicular homicide and hit and run. I'm glad that they were together, kind of, when they died, but that's two kids that were taken out of people's lives. Miller now wonders how to explain to her son's nearly three-year-old son. But her biggest question, how Skillingstad was on the road at all. In 2013, the then 19-year-old was convicted in a fatal hit and run. Court records show she hit a bicyclist who later died. She later pleaded guilty to failure to stay at the scene of a fatal accident. She served four and a half months and did more than 200 hours of community service. She took a life already and then two more snapped out in one time like I'm not gonna let this go I'm not Miller says she'll be at every court appearance and just for them to be snapped out of life like that was I'm not letting it go there's gonna be something good coming out of this Skilling stat is being held on a million dollars bond Shannon Mowdy from 2 News all right, Shannon, thank you very much. In other news, taking a live look inside the South Hill Library, where Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward is hosting a town hall right now. That meeting is to discuss the city's finances and priorities for the 2024 budget, and it is open to the public. The mayor is encouraging anyone to drop in at any time to contribute to the conversation. It will be held until 7 o'clock tonight. We do have a crew there at that meeting. We'll bring you updates on any developments coming up tonight on Crime 2 News at 10 and 11. Now to some breaking news at this hour. Within the last hour, Governor Jay Inslee announcing he will be calling lawmakers back to Olympia for a special session this month. Lawmakers were unable to reach an agreement on a new drug possession law during this year's regular legislative session. So they will return to Olympia on May 16th, which is two weeks from today. And under the governor's proclamation, lawmakers can return to Olympia for up to 30 days. The governor says it is his hope legislators can agree on a deal within a few days. We'll keep you posted. In other top headlines, the Spokane County Air Rescue crews have found a hiker that was missing for more than 24 hours near Liberty Lake. Air One crews tweeted out these photos this afternoon. The man was last seen leaving his home to go on a hike at the Liberty Lake Regional Park yesterday morning. He was found in a remote area on the Idaho side of the border. A search crew of more than a dozen people searched throughout the night for him and by air all afternoon. He is believed to be in good health, but is undergoing a medical evaluation. We are also learning about an attack on a corrections officer inside the Chelan County Justice Center in Wenatchee. According to officials, two inmates attacked the officer, knocking them to the ground and repeatedly hitting them with improvised weapons. Another officer jumped in to stop the attack. The officer suffered stab wounds to the head, neck and arms and had to be taken to the hospital. Those inmates have now been charged with attempted aggravated murder, prison riot and weapons possession by a prisoner. All new developments tonight in the Pullman shooting that killed one person and seriously injured a WSU football player about two years ago. The Pullman Police Department has just completed its investigation into that shooting, which happened near a large party on College Hill. The Whitman County Prosecutor's Office is now reviewing the department's recommendations, which include more than one felony charge. Commander Aaron Brashear says detectives just recently completed the investigation, saying it was a complex case with a lot of evidence and witnesses.
this case has not been forgotten by the Pullman Police Department. Um, since the shooting occurred uh, September 25th, 2021, um, we have been continually investigating since. Um, it has been a complicated investigation involving lots of moving factors. George Harris III allegedly shot and killed his roommate, Lyben Barr. That shooting also seriously injured former WSU football player Brandon Gray. Harris turned himself into police and claimed he fired in self-defense. He was initially arrested for second-degree assault, but he was quickly released from jail after posting bond. At the time, prosecutors had not yet formally filed charges against him because they were waiting on the outcome of Pullman PD's investigation. We expect to learn what charges prosecutors file once they finish reviewing the case. Well, if you stayed up late, 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 late last night, well, there you go. If you stayed up <laughs> late last night, you may have seen the storm lighting up the night sky. And if you didn't see the lightning, you no doubt heard that thunder. And if you missed the thunderstorm, well, more are expected tonight after the summer heat returned to the forecast. So for more on that and tonight's thunderstorms and what to expect, let's get right to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Lagoo. Well, when it comes to those storms, we're already starting to see a few fire off, and I think they arrive a little <laughs> bit earlier than last night, and I think they wind up being a little bit stronger than what we saw last night. Right now, our temperatures are in the 80s, 81 degrees. We did get up to 83 a bit earlier, but those temps dropping ever so slightly with a little bit of cloud cover moving in. Still have some of those flood concerns. Right now, they're all flood watches. So let's talk those storms. There's that one we were talking about a bit earlier. Most of the activity in the southern Idaho panhandle right now. Lots of energy, lots of thunder, lots of lightning out of those. And then that one storm just to the south. Oh, there, let's go back. All right, there we go. Just to the south of Kellogg there. This is the one I was saying we should watch. And there it is. Now it's starting to show a little bit of convection, show signs that it's getting a little bit stronger. We'll see if that collapses on itself or holds together as it works its way up toward Coeur d'Alene. Either way, we're going to keep watching that band itself lift off to the north and push to the west. That is eventually going to hit us in kind of the 7, 8 o'clock hour and then continue to move through. I think here in Spokane, similar timing to what we saw last night, maybe slightly earlier before it moves out and weakens by the time we hit about midnight. So very similar to what we saw yesterday. Tomorrow, Thursday, near 80 degrees, and then a big shift hits the region starting Friday. Sounds good, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Well, today, members of the City Council, the Parks Board, and Spokane Police met to talk about changing the city code to make it a misdemeanor to be in a park after hours. Spokane Parks and SPD are making that request, citing increased crime in the parks. From January of 2021 to March of this year, they said there were almost 700 incidents in 32 different parks, 79 of them violent, all while the parks were technically closed. And the cost to repair the damage is taking away funding from other projects. And also, they say it makes law-abiding visitors less likely to want to even go to the parks. City leaders say this change would ultimately be an investment into the community. When somebody on the news or something hears of a negative activity or a crime that happens during the night, the perception is that that park isn't safe during the day. And that's just truly not the reality. Um, it's really this is the, the criminal activity that we're seeing in our parks is, is during when the parks are closed. Right now, the rules said certain activities like having drugs or weapons within a park as a misdemeanor, but anything not specified in those rules is only a class one infraction. And that means officers can't do much when someone is in a park after it's closed. We will have very little enforcement on this once we establish credibility. There won't be the need for it. A lot of times just the presence of an officer arriving will be enough that those that have gathered will decide to pack up and leave. So City Council proposed a different wording to the rule, saying that it would become a misdemeanor crime once a person ignores an officer who says to leave a park after hours. All right, now looking ahead to a story that we are working on for tomorrow. Earthquakes, a big concern over in Seattle and the entire west side of the state. But what about here in eastern Washington, specifically Spokane? Is, is it true that there's a fault line that goes down Division Street, but north and south that runs? Like an earthquake fault line? Yeah, yeah, like an earthquake fault line. Okay. So join us tonight on Kremptie News at 6 as I ask the experts about fault lines in and around Spokane.